Life with the Lions! Once again, we'd like you to meet the Lion family. I'm Richard Lyon. I'm Barbara Lyon. I'm Benjamin Lyon. And I'm Baby Daniels Lyon. And here they are in the upper set. Hey, Ma, is dinner ready? Almost. You better get washed. I already did. See my hands? Well, they don't look very clean to me. Did you use plenty of soap? Soap? Oh, I knew I'd forgotten something. <laughs> well, run upstairs and wash them properly. Okay. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Lyon, is Mr. Lyon home yet? No, but he should be here any minute. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, he's acting very strange these days. Yes, and so absent-minded. Oh, here he comes. I'll leave you alone. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, I'm home. Hello, honey. Oh, something smells good. What is it? It's lamb chops in the oven. Uh, Ben, is something wrong? No, that's a fine way to greet a husband. Of course there's nothing wrong. Why should anything be wrong? I don't know, dear. I just, uh... Well, I I don't know. Where are the kids? Upstairs getting washed. You're sure there's nothing wrong? Of course I'm sure. I certainly ought to know. Uh, hmm, Something smells good. What is it? (laughs) I already told you, lamb chops in the oven, and the kids are still upstairs. Oh, yes, yes, so you did, yes. So you did tell me, yes, yes, yes. What did I tell you? The lamb chops are upstairs washing and the kids are in the oven. Ben, what's the matter with you? You've been acting very strangely. Well, what makes you say that? Oh, nothing. Only when you walked into lunch today, you kissed the fish, sprinkled vinegar on my head, then held up the serviette and said, there's no news in the paper today. <laughs> Oh, now, stop being fantastic. All right, but you have got something on your mind, and I want to know what it is. Well, it's... Well, uh, well, B.B., I was looking at my life insurance policy today, and... Oh, well, you and the children will be well taken care of when I'm gone. Where are you going? <laughs> when I'm gone, you know what I mean. Something has happened, and you're not telling me. Honey, I tell you, nothing has happened. It's just that a man has to think of his family and... Darling, please, please tell me the truth. Well, I... I saw my x-ray pictures today and... Oh, let's not talk about it. (laughs) We will talk about it. What did they find out from the x-rays? Well, you may as well know the worst. I've got to have a tooth pulled. (laughs) (laughs) Tooth pulled. Is that all? Is that all? I suppose you think it's a lot of fun having a tooth pulled. <laughs> no, but you'll get over it. In time, yes. Of course, I'll have to spend a few days in bed and take it easy for a week or so. <laughs> Why, you big baby, you're scared. Me? Scared? <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's not the idea of losing a tooth that worries me. No, no, it's going to the dentist. Yes, that and the fact that Aggie and the kids might find out. Oh, we mustn't tell them. Why? Well, you know how Aggie exaggerates. She'll tell the whole neighborhood that I was losing all my teeth. And Bob and Richard would probably tell their friends that I reached the age where I should be pushed around in a wheelchair. (laughs) Oh, that's ridiculous. One tooth won't make that much difference. Why, toothless old men in wheelchairs look at least a hundred. And you look... Don't tell the kids, huh? Uh. (laughs) No. dinner, wasn't it, dear? Yes, but I wish the kids would hurry back for the coffee. What's keeping them? Oh, Ben, snap out of that mood. You know, I think you'd feel better if you told the children that you're going to have your tooth pulled. I certainly will not. And I don't want to hear any more about teeth. Do you understand? All right. All right. Here's the coffee. And here's the milk. Thank kids. Say, Pop, after dinner, could you help me with my homework? Uh, certainly not. You must do it on your own, son. Gee, I hate homework. Especially math. It's like having a tooth pulled. Richard! <laughs> What's the matter? Uh, well, dear, your, your father's a little tired. I'll help you with your homework. Is it a multiplication, division, or extraction? Huh? Uh, I 
mean subtraction. Oh. <laughs> Daddy, what's wrong with you? It's my, uh, oh, nothing's the matter. Uh, Barbara, hand me the coffee, dear. Oh, here you are, Mother. I met a girl at our tennis club today who knows where to get wonderful nylons. Now, there's a brilliant piece of conversation. You just don't understand, Daddy. Good nylons are as scarce as hen's teeth. <laughs> Barbara, I... Uh, now, dear, dear, calm down, calm down. All right, but please make them stop it. Oh. Stop what? Miss Barbara, you forgot to bring in the sugar, and you know what a sweet tooth your father has. Oh. Oh, Mr. Lion, what's the matter? Oh, he's a little depressed, that's all. Oh, then I'll cheer him up. He likes riddles, doesn't he? Oh, yes, he loves them. Good. Mr. Lion, what's the difference between a lady buying buns and a dentist? No, 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 Aggie, no. You don't know? Then I'll tell you. The lady thanks the baker, and the dentist yanks the acre. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it. Can't you all talk about anything but teeth? It's been teeth here, teeth there, and I'm sick of it by gum. <laughs> oh, what am I saying? Oh, all right, all right, dear. Now, here's your coffee. Have a rinse out. <laughs> I mean, have a drink, dear. That's not the door. That's Pop banging his head on the wall. <laughs> then stop it. We just have that wall painted. <laughs> now, kids, you'd better help Aggie clean the table. Okay. But I don't... I, I still don't see what Pop's so upset about. I think I do. Come along, children. All right, Aggie. Now, honey, pull yourself together and stop acting like a baby. Oh, leave me alone. Ah, oh, now that's no way to be. Come on now, smile. <laughs> Show your little dimple. Mm, I, I will not. Oh. Come on, smile. Coochie, 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 coochie. <laughs> That's better. Come in. Phoebe, darling. Flurry, darling. Um, haven't we forgotten something? Oh, yes. <laughs> Ben, dear. I said, hello, neighbor, dear. Goodbye, Flory. <laughs> I thought after last week you were going to be nice to Flory. Oh, don't get upset, darling. I'm used to his bad manners. If he isn't being rude to me, he's making insulting remarks about my appearance. How can you say that? I like your appearance. You don't. But I do. I really do. Honestly. Honestly. Believe me, Flory, when I look at you, I realize how beautiful, how fascinating, how lovely other women are. Oh. <laughs> oh, I might have expected that. Oh, I love to kid you, Flory. Furthermore, if you flatter people, it goes to their heads. Well, it certainly went to yours. You're flatter on the head than you are around the middle. <laughs> now you're being rude. Well, he started just as usual. Well, you should forgive him today. The poor darling's worried because he has to have a toothy pulled. He's eaten hardly anything since yesterday. Baby, you promised not to tell anybody. Oh, that is too bad. But you shouldn't let it stop you from eating, Ben. Insufficient food leads to malnutrition. And you know how you'll end up? You mean too thin? No, too thout. <laughs> I've had enough. I'm going upstairs. And don't either of you tell a, tell a soul about my tooth, you hear? <laughs> Why are men such babies? I don't know. I guess it's because they were born that way. <laughs> oh, Richard, I want to talk to you. Well, it won't do you any good. My money's in the bank. <laughs> Can't you ever think about anything but money? Sure, but why torture myself? <laughs> what I have to tell you is very important. In fact, the future of the entire family may depend on us. Here, here, what are you two talking about, Aggie? You might as well know. This family is facing what is known in psychology as a crisis. What's all this leading up to? Well, you saw what happened at the dinner table tonight. Do you know what that means? What what means? Daddy jumping on us every time we opened our mouths. Gosh, that's nothing new. That's been happening to me all my life. Yes, but he never picked on Mother like he did tonight. And according to psychology... Incompatibility is partly a manifestation of an introspective ego and partly reactions of a sublimated ego. Hmm. If you're going to swear at me, do it in English. Oh, be serious. What I'm trying to tell you is incompatibility can lead to only one thing, a broken home. Ah, you're nuts. I'm going to the pictures. How can you think of the pictures at a time like this? Because there's nothing serious. You're making a mountain into a moleskin. Now, 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 wait a minute, Master 
Richard, Miss Barbara may be right. Oh, of course I'm right, Aggie. And we must all help to keep them together. Well, I'll help. What do we do? Well, according to Freud, there are three ways. One, realization of a common danger like, well, the illness of someone they both love. Two, a reawakening of interest through something like jealousy. And three, a short separation of the parents in order to re-stimulate the original affection. <laughs> Holy cat! How are we supposed to know which of the three is the best? Yes, how? We don't have to know. We'll try all three. Now, first of all, one of us will have to pretend to be ill. Good. Who will we use as a guinea pig? Well. <laughs> Will everybody stop looking at me? <laughs> Mother's coming up the stairs. Hurry and lie down, Richard. Okay, okay. And remember, act very, very ill. I'll be in the next room. Help me! Help me! <laughs> I'm fading fast. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, I'm terribly ill. Oh. <laughs> oh, lie still, darling, and let Mommy look at you. Your head is cool. Your eyes are clear. Let me take your pulse. Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Your pulse is normal. Stick out your tongue. Oh, no use, Ma. No tongue can tell how I feel. <laughs> oh. oh. Richard, Richard, my boy, what's the matter? Oh, poor, poor Richard. <laughs> Well, where does it hurt, son? Well, I hurt upstairs this morning, then I hurt in the dining room all through breakfast, and now I hurt right here on this sofa. No, no, I mean, where's the pain? Well, it's in my stomach, my head, and it's, and it's in my knee, too. Oh, I'll get the doctor. Oh, no, Pop, don't get a doctor. Why not? Well, I'm too sick to see a doctor. <laughs> Listen, Richard, your stomach, your head, and your knee can't all ache at the same time. Now, make up your mind. Which is it? Well, it's my stomach. Oh, that's it. It's my poor stomach. Oh, Phoebe, how can you stand there and argue with a poor child? Can't you see he's ill? Yes. Hand me that large bottle of castor oil. <laughs> castor oil? Yes, it's very good for stomach aches. Oh, my head. Oh. <laughs> oh, my poor head. It's good for headaches, too. Give me the castor oil, Ben. Oh, my knee. Oh, oh my knee's chilling me. I thought it was your head. Oh, it was, Pop, but uh, oh, the pain sort of moves around. Come on, darling. Take this castor oil. But, Ma, castor oil won't take the ache out of my knee. You'll be surprised what castor oil will do. <laughs> now, come on. Drink it. Oh, I can't, Ma. I'm too weak. All right, dear. Good night. Oh, Bebe, are you sure he's all right? Positive. I've seen cases like this before. It's an extreme case of fake itis. Good night, <laughs> darling. Good night, my mother. <laughs> Good night, son. I'm going... I'm going. Won't somebody help me? I'm so alone. Oh! You know, I don't like the way that boy is acting. Neither do I. I must get him a better dramatic teacher. Oh, baby. fine actor you turned out to be. So I'm not as good as Alec Guinness. <laughs> well, what are we going to do now? Try jealousy. I smeared some lipstick on Daddy's necktie. If that doesn't work, we'll try the short separation angle. Oh, here we come. Now remember, jealousy. Come on. Let's go into my kitchen and plan things properly. Okay. Ben, is this dentist you're going to any good? Oh, they say he's the best. Why? Oh, well, it just seems strange that you've never had a toothache. I certainly think if a tooth has to be pulled, there ought to be an ache somewhere. Look, baby, if the x-ray says it has to come out, it has to come out. Well, I don't think that dentist is any good. What makes you say a thing like that? Well, look at his patients. He never has anyone in his waiting room who doesn't have trouble with their teeth. <laughs> well, naturally. Say, Pop, is it right if I wear your uh, tie tonight? Which one? The one with the uh, lipstick on it. Lipstick? I don't think I have any tie with lipstick on it. Where is it? Upstairs in your room. I'll go up and bring it down. All right. Here's the tie, Pop. <laughs> well, you could have hurried. I'm sorry, uh, the stairs get in my way. 
Well, remind me to have them removed. <laughs> now, let's see the tie. Hmm. Certainly looks like lipstick, doesn't it? Yeah. I wonder where you got it. Don't you, Ma? No. Put Barbara and me around. It's a wonder your father isn't covered with lipstick. I'll send the tie to the cleaners in the morning. Oh, here's your tea, Mrs. Lyon. Uh, thank you, Aggie. Say, Ma. Yes, dear? You know what the milkman told me today? He said he thinks you're gorgeous. Well, isn't that nice? Hey, maybe I better look into this. <laughs> oh, he don't have to worry, Mr. Lyon. He's old. I'll bet he's almost 30. <laughs> well, uh... I guess there's nothing to worry about then. <laughs> no, uh, he's only in love with Ma in a serious sort of way. Oh, he is, is he? Well, what about me? No, he's just in love with Ma. <laughs> Aye, that's right. You know what happened yesterday, Pop? I hope you won't get too upset, but he carried Ma's groceries into the house. So what? You're pretty jealous, huh? Of course not. Well, I'll bet you'll make Ma stay upstairs next time he delivers the milk, huh? <laughs> Why should I? Huh? Well, he's, he's very good looking, isn't he, Mrs. Lyon? Yes, he is handsome. But you know something? When he delivered the milk yesterday, he reminded me of you, Ben. Really? Yes. He said, how's Ben? Oh, fine. A uh, BB? Yes, dear? Uh, what do you suppose we'd have to pay for a good cow these days? <laughs> I don't know. I'll ask the milkman. <laughs> Richard, you better run along and do your homework. Don't you want to hear any more about the milkman? No, son, no. Come along with me, Master Richard. You can do your homework in the kitchen. <laughs> well, if that wasn't the most ridiculous thing I ever heard, imagine the milkman and me. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> He's kind of cute at that. Yes, yes, and he shows he has good taste. Uh, probably has all of his teeth, too. <laughs> oh, honey... Oh, Daddy, I just read something that gave me a wonderful idea for you. I'll bet. What is it this time? Eight free dresses if I buy a small yacht? <laughs> oh, Daddy. Or was it 60 pair of nylons if I swim the channel with Winston Churchill on my head? <laughs> oh, no, it was nothing like that. Well, good for me. <laughs> I, was, I was merely thinking about you. You haven't had a holiday in a long time. Uh, Barbara's right, dear. You're all run down. Why don't you give up golf for a while and get a nice long rest at the office? <laughs> no, Mother. I meant Daddy should take a hunting trip. Oh. A nice long trip. No, no, baby. I'm too busy. Well, then, how about Mother taking a trip? It would do her good. She needs a change of air. Then I'll get her an electric fan. <laughs> Honestly, Daddy. <laughs> well, I think I'll read the paper. You can't, dear. You're supposed to be at the dentist in 15 minutes. The dentist today... You know good and well it's today. Oh, well, all right. Goodbye, darling. Think of me while I'm gone. I will, and stop worrying. Just keep a stiff upper lip. I will. And keep the lower one still, too. Thanks. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Lyon. Come straight into the waiting room. Oh, is, uh, is the uh, dentist in? Yes. Well, if he's busy, I'll gladly come back some other time when he's busy. <laughs> no, no, you'll see you in a few minutes, as soon as he's finished with his other patient. Hello, Mr. Elf. Why don't you sit down and relax? Well, oh, Wimple, I didn't see you over there in the corner. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll tell the dentist you're here. You didn't tell me you had to see the dentist, Wimple. Neither did you. So you're having them all out, eh? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I have very strong teeth. Why, I haven't paid a dentist bill in years. So the dentist was telling me. <laughs> now stop that. <laughs> Here. Barney, listen to that dental drill. Are you nervous, Mr. L? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Anyway, you were here uh, way ahead of me, so you go in first. Oh, no, 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 no. After you. I, I wouldn't dream of going in there and leaving you out here suffering. <laughs> no, no. I'll go in after you. What's a few minutes or, or hours or, or days or, or weeks or months or years? <laughs> Whipple, you sound frightened. Don't tell me you're a coward. Yes. <laughs> Haven't you heard... Oh, don't be a child. There's nothing to be afraid of. Be like me, relax. 
Pick a magazine, a nice new one. Only four years old, off the table and read it like this. See? Oh. So now you're relaxed, eh? Yes, don't you believe me? Yes, except for one thing. What's that? Magazine's upside down. <laughs> oh. And furthermore, it's not a magazine. It's a briefcase. <laughs> well, that's a... That's a natural mistake. <laughs> now, the... The important thing is not to be frightened. <laughs> yes, that's right. Is, uh, this man is a good dentist, isn't he? I mean, he's careful. Oh, yes, yes, they say he doesn't hurt at all. So there's really nothing to get worried about. He's gentle and considerate. Why, all of his patients go around saying... <laughs> What was that? No, take that away. I can't stand you. Put that girl down. Don't come any closer. Take it away, I tell you. Take it away. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I am. I am. I am. <laughs> oh, I am sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, oh, mister. Mister, tell me, please, is the... Is the patient all right? Oh, that wasn't the patient. That was the dentist. <laughs> yes, the five-year-old boy was chasing him around the surgery with the electric drill. I'm proud of that little boy. Here. Here. Ask him to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm laughing at. <laughs> oh, dear. This has really upset my stomach. Now, who's next? Oh, Wimple, you mustn't keep the dentist standing around. Oh, he isn't standing. He backed into the electric drill. Now he's cooling off in the water basin. <laughs> oh, dear, my, my stomach's playing strange tricks. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Wimple, that, uh, that water basin's certainly making a funny sound. That isn't the basin, Mr. L. That's my stomach. Well, let's go in and get the poor dentist out of that basin. <laughs> Wimple, your tummy is really upset. Oh, that wasn't Mr. Wimple. The dentist is now standing again. Oh, oh good. <laughs> By the sound of it, he's back in the basin. No, that was my stomach. The dentist will be ready for you in a few minutes. <laughs> Oh, Wimple, I can't stand this waiting much longer. Ah, Mr. Lyon, there we are. Have you an appointment card? Oh, oh yes, yes, here it is. Uh, appointment at 2.30 with dental practitioners Painless, Drillis, and Phyllis. That's right. <laughs> Painless and Drillis are my partners. I'm Phyllis. <laughs> <laughs> Step right into my surgery. All right, Phyllis. <laughs> Good luck, Mr. Dale. Thanks. Oh. Oh, come now. Don't be nervous. Oh. Remember, teeth are lots of fun. In fact, every tooth tells a funny story. What? Yes, I always say to my patients, stop me if I've hurt this one before. <laughs> oh, you silly me. <laughs> well, uh... Quite a little comic, aren't you? That's because I wasn't always a dentist. I used to be a comedian on the stage. Is that so? I had a cousin who was a saxophone player on the stage, but he was so bad he finally became a dentist. That's quite a change from a saxophone player to a dentist. Oh, I don't know. He's still making false toots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I made a gummy. <laughs> Mr. Lyon, my profession is nothing to laugh at. You've no idea how heartless some of my patients are. How do you mean? Well, it's bad enough when they don't pay their bills, but when they pass me on the street and sneer at me with my own teeth... <laughs> it's just too, too much. Well, don't look at me. I don't wear falsies. <laughs> I know, I know, yes. Come now, sit in the dental chair. All right, look, are you sure this won't hurt? Hurt? Why, no, not at all. Good, because I'm very sensitive. Oh, you? Yes, it might hurt you. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. Now, 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 now. Open your mouth and keep it open. 
Oh, isn't it damp in there? <laughs> Tell me, according to the x-ray picture, which is the naughty tooty Peggy that has to come out? Hmm? Uh, 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 Would you mind saying that again? I have I that one. Really? Thank you. Oh, just a minute. Surely you couldn't understand what I was saying with my mouth open? No, but I was getting the most fascinating signals from your tonsils. <laughs> Now, look, never mind the jokes. Just concentrate on my teeth. Don't worry, I found one that needs filling. But first, I have to scrape it a little. Mouth open again, please. Oh, I hate that scraping sound. Open, please. There. Isn't that a quiet, peaceful noise? Now for a little more scraping. But it doesn't sound quiet to me. To me, it sounds like... Open, please. <laughs> That's it. That's the noise. What noise? I didn't hear anything. Now I'll start the drilling. Open, please. <laughs> I've nearly finished. Just a little more quiet drilling. What do you mean, quiet? To me, it sounds like... Open, please. <laughs> That's it. That's the noise. <laughs> well, now you can relax. The drilling's finished. Now, I'll just put the filling in. What would you like? Lemon, strawberry, or vanilla? <laughs> I'll stop that. That's just what I'm doing. <laughs> I will have my little joke. Now, there's the filling. That's done it. Oh, thanks. If you'll come back tomorrow, I'll take out the tooth the x-ray says must come out. It's a beautiful one. Such long, curly roots. <laughs> Hello, baby. Well, I'm glad you're back. Mother wants you to fix the tap in the kitchen. A fine thing. I come home feeling ill and she wants me to work. I don't get any sympathy from her any of these days. Daddy, Richard and I have been talking about you and Mother. We want you both to make up before this whole thing goes too far. Too far? What are you talking about? Oh, please listen. Try to imagine what it would be like to lose your dearest treasure. All these years you've carried before you a vision of that dear, sweet face you loved so much. What would happen if that vision suddenly shattered? I'd just have to buy myself another mirror. <laughs> I'm talking about Mother. Talking about me? Who's talking about me? Well, I am Mother. You and Daddy have been drifting apart. What? Yes. That's why we made up all that stuff about the trips and Richard being sick and the milkman. Oh, so that's what it was all about. <laughs> oh, look, baby, you don't have to worry about us. I've been upset on account of my tooth. You mean you're still in love with each other? Of course, darling. Oh, baby, I'm sorry if I've been irritable the last few days. Oh, that's all right, dear. I guess we've both been pretty silly. Ridiculous is more the word. I hope you didn't think I was really jealous of the milkman. Oh, I knew you weren't. As far as I'm concerned, the milkman can call as many times as he likes. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lyon, where do you want me to put this cow? <laughs> Well, I, I was in the dairy, and I just couldn't go out without buying something. <laughs> hey, Pop, your dentist just rang up about your x-ray photos. Oh, please, son, don't remind me. I want to forget about it until tomorrow. You can forget about it for good. You see, the dentist got your x-rays mixed up with somebody else's. What? That's right. You don't have to have your tooth pulled. It's somebody else. No kidding. Who is it? Mr. Wimple. Oh, <laughs> poor Wimple. Oh, boy, will he suffer. <laughs> That was Life of the Lion with B.B. Daniels and Ben Lyon with their children Barbara and Richard. Also in this recording of Doris Rogers, Molly Weir, Horace Percival, David Enders and Hugh Morton. Script by B.B. Daniels, Bob Block and Bill Harding. The BBC Variety Orchestra was conducted by Paul Fennelly with incidental music by Arthur Wilkins. Production by Tom Ronald. <laughs>